Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've got the lesson on Romans. And uh, I talked to Wallace this week, and Wallace said, I'm sorry, I didn't get the lesson on Wallace coming on Romans because I think that's his favorite. It's my favorite as well. Um, but before we start the lesson, let me ask a few questions. What do you expect when you read the Bible? Fresh insight into what I'm reading. Mm -hmm. Fresh insight into what you're reading. Anything else? Got it. Pardon? Got it. Yeah. Comfort. Comfort. Guidance. Comfort. What is the best book other than the Bible that you've ever read? I'm glad I'm asking the questions instead of answering them. <laughs> Anybody? I liked Facing Your Giants by Matt Applicato. I think I've read that five times because it's just that good. It's good. Um, and it's all about David. Right. Um, and it was just really probably my, my very favorite book next to the Bible. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, we read books and, and they have a great impact on us, and I know I read a number of them over and over. Um, I don't guess John Grisham counts, but. Uh, <laughs> um, I just finished reading Max Licato's um, In the Grip of Grace, mm -hmm. all about Romans. Right. Well, maybe you can help me today. <laughs> <laughs> If someone asks you who and what made you what you are, what would you say? You are the way you are. Someone obviously probably had some impact or something had an impact on who and what, what you are. Family. Family, okay. Did everyone get a book? Did you get a quarter? Okay. Family has a great impact on us. Um, what is your favorite book in the Bible? Philippians. Philippians. Good. How many would say Romans? Yeah, it would be in the top list. I've always liked the book of Romans. It's had a great impact on me, and I'll, I'll mention that in a while. But let's look at this. We're on the first chapter, the first 17 verses. Uh, the book of Romans is the most formal and systematic of Paul's writings. The main theme of Romans is that righteousness comes as a free gift of God and is receivable by faith alone. Romans stands at the head of the Paul, uh, Pauline epistles because it's the longest of his letters, but it is also Paul's most important epistle. Paul had heard of the church in Rome, but he had never been there, nor had any of the other apostles. Evidently, the church had been begun by the Jews who had come to faith during the Pentecost, and they spread the faith of their return to Rome, and the church grew. Although many barriers separated them, Paul felt a bond with these Romans. And you can tell that from reading the Bible, the book. They were his brothers and sisters in Christ, and he longed to see them face to face. He had never met most of the believers there, yet he loved them. And he sent this letter to introduce himself and make a clear declaration of faith. Paul wrote the letter to the Romans during his ministry in Corinth. Uh, it was at the end of his third missionary journey, just before returning to Jerusalem to encourage the believers and express his desire to visit Rome sometime, someday. And three years later, he would. 
The Roman church had no New Testament because the Gospels had not yet been circulated in their final written form. Thus, this letter may well have been the first piece of Christian literature the Romans, Roman believers had seen written by both Jewish and written to both Jewish and Gentile Christians. The letter of Romans is a systematic presentation of the Christian faith. Now, there's some vital statistics of the book I thought we ought to look at. Um, the purpose for the book was to introduce Paul to the Romans and to give a sample of his message before he arrives in Rome. Obviously, Paul is the author. It was written to whom? It was written the Christians in Rome. And who else? Gentiles. The Gentiles. And there's one other group. What about us? We read it. We use it. Um, so the Christians in Rome and believers everywhere. The date written, I, I looked at two or three different um, books on that. And it said uh, 56, 57, 58, somewhere in A.D. 56, 57. Uh, from Corinth as Paul was preparing his visit to Jerusalem. And the setting, apparently Paul had finished his work in the east and he planned to visit Rome on his way to Spain after first bringing a collection to Jerusalem for the poor Christians there. The Roman church was mostly Jewish, but it also contained a great number of Gentiles. And obviously the key place was Rome. And special features, Paul wrote Romans as an organized and carefully presented statement of his faith. It does not have the form of a typical letter. He does, however, spend considerable time greeting people in Rome at the end of the letter. Now let's look at the first seven verses. Starting in verse 1, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets, in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David and who through sp the spirit of holiness was appointed the son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord through him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake and you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul opens the letter by describing himself as a servant of Jesus Christ, while also appealing to his authority as an apostle. Now, the early church, the apostles proclaimed the gospel in the authority of their personal encounters with Jesus Christ. Paul claimed his authority based on his Damascus uh, road experience, if you remember how he uh, came to know Christ. Passages, in passages 1 to 5, Paul seeks to clarify that his authority is real. He isn't making an empty boast. On the contrary, he is, has truly encountered the living Lord who commissioned him to do his work as an apostle. Let's look at verses 3 to 5. Paul summarizes the good news about Jesus Christ. First, who came as a human by natural descent. Chapter verse 3, regarding his son, who as to his earthly life was a descendant of David. He was a part of the Jewish royal line through David died and raised from the dead, uh, who through the spirit of holiness was appointed the Son of God in power by his resurrection from the dead. Open the door for God's grace and kindness uh, to be poured out to us. Through him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. In verses 6 and 7, Paul shifts the focus from himself to members of the Roman church. He explains that these believers have also been called into life or into life of service by Jesus Christ. In 
Verse 6 says, And you also are among those Gentiles who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Then he wishes the blessings of grace and peace upon them in verse 7. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be his holy people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now those are the first seven verses. We go then to 8 through 15. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve in my spirit in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times, and I pray that now, at last, by God's will, the way will be open for me to come to you. <coughs> I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I plan many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you, just as I have among the other Gentiles. I am obligated both to the Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish, this is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. How do you think the Roman, the, the church members there accepted this? The people in Rome accepted what Paul was saying? They were probably scared of him. Why would that be? Well, his history was persecuting the Christians. <laughs> That's right. He had had that history. And what is Paul doing here in this book, this book? letter to the Romans. Trying to counteract that. He's counteracting it. He's, he's talking about it. He's telling what it is. Uh, if you look at verse 8, it says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. So Paul in that combines wisdom and love in that verse. So he shows the, the uh, church there, shows the Romans that he loves them. Um, what's his compliment in this verse? That they're proclaiming the, their faith. Yeah, he said, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you. So he's thanking God for them. And what would this matter? Why would that matter? Your faith is being reported all over the world. Um, remember Paul had never been to Rome and didn't know the people rather than beginning with a critical analysis Paul here begins with praise now what what benefit does that do to, to what he's teaching the people in Rome by starting with praise praising them well it gets their attention it gets their attention it, 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 it's not critical of them. It's, it's complimenting them. And so, you know, they probably would listen better, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I know I usually prefer somebody to be nice to me before they... <laughs> you know, that's not always been the case. <laughs> In my profession, a lot of folks didn't like me. But, um, rather than beginning with a critical analysis, Paul begins with praise. The Roman Christians at the Western world's political power center were highly visible. Fortunately, their reputation was excellent. Their strong faith was making itself known around the world. So he was going to someone and, and, and they had an audience, didn't they? And he's teaching them. Now verse 10, in my prayers at all times, and I pray that now at last, by God's will, the way will be open for me to come to you. So Paul is telling him he really wants to come see them. Um, when we pray continually about a concern, we should not be surprised at how God answers. Does God answer our prayers always the way we ask? Sometimes, but 
when he answers the prayer and later on we look back how he answered that prayer is that the best way always always have you ever had one of those prayers that just you just begged God for or that you prayed to God and didn't know that there, there was one verse one, one thing that happened to me and the reason I've all one of the reasons I've always liked Romans is my father had terminal cancer and I was with him the night that he passed away. He, uh, he was in the bed. The, the, um, the group had already brought him um, hospital, whatever, bed. hospital bed. He was in the hospital bed and I was gonna sleep on the couch beside where he was. And my dad could snore. <clears throat> he could keep the whole house away from him. <laughs> and he was laying over there snoring. And I knelt, knelt down to pray. And, and let me read you this scripture. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. That's Romans 8.26. And as I lay there or knelt down and, and I said, God, I can't ask you to take my father. I, I just couldn't do that. But do what you think is right. And my dad passed away in about 15 minutes. And I'll always remember that verse and how that verse meant so much to me. And I can't tell you that all of a sudden it popped in. It's Romans 8, 26, and here it is. I mean, it was the, the, the theme of that verse was so important at that time. Um, when we pray continually about a concern, we should not be surprised at how God answers. Now, here, here we see with Paul. Paul is praying that he can go to Rome. Paul prayed for a visit to Rome so he could teach the Christians there. When he arrived in Rome, it was as a prisoner. Look at Acts 28.16. Paul prayed for a safe trip, and he did arrive safely after getting arrested, slapped in the face, shipwrecked, and bitten by a poison snake. But he got there. Yeah. Verses 14 and 15, Paul expresses his desire to share the gospel with everyone. Uh, he isn't intimidated by the civilized or cultured individuals of his world nor is he repulsed or above sharing the gospel with those whom others considered unworthy. Verse 14, I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. And then the last two verses, 16 and 17, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone <coughs> who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For it is the gospel of the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. In verses 16 and 17, Paul at last introduces the theme that carries through the remainder of the letter. What is his purpose for writing? He asserts his boldness in sharing the gospel, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. And Paul states his thesis in verse 17, salvation is the gift of God, given by grace, and received through faith. Paul writes, the righteous will live by faith. In other words, God reveals divine righteousness through the faithfulness or allegiance displayed in Jesus Christ, which is answered by the faithful response of humans. What are some of your favorite passages, Christian, scripture passages? Philippians 4.13. Okay. Jeremiah 29.11. I know the plans I have for you. Okay. Others? Romans 8, 38 and 39. Romans 8, 38 and 39. I like Romans 8, 31. 
which is a couple past that. Isaiah 41, 10 and 13. Okay. We, we can all talk about verses that have meant a lot to us, can't we? That, you know, you may have a verse that just, that's, that's what you live by. And Romans 8, 31 is one of those that, that I like. What is that? What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for you, who's against you? Who can be against you? And you think about that. If God is for us, who can be against us? And I think we can think about that right now in the situation that we are in the world with this thing that's coming around, COVID, that keeps returning. But we've had difficult times before, and God has always been there, hasn't he? So, as Al said, you know, that's what we have to trust. Paul clearly sets forth the foundations of the Christian faith. All people are sinful. Now, I, I know this. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Think about it. All people are sinful. Christ died to forgive sin. We are made right with God through faith. This begins a new life with a new relationship with God. Like a sports team that constantly reviews the basics, we will be greatly helped in our faith by keeping close to these foundations. If we study Romans carefully, we will never be at a loss to know what to believe. That was the lesson. Now I know that's short. We had 17 verses. Those are important verses, I think, as Paul is introducing a book that has so much in it that we will be using if, if we read it. Uh, I thought it was funny. I, I have a, the way I read my scriptures. And I, my first, I got to Romans this week, the first chapter of Romans. And it just, that was what was there. And that, that's... I was, I was coincidence that I was working on a lesson and there in Romans 1 was. But um, do, do you just read the one chapter? No. Because it, Paul goes on and tells all. Anything else? Well, it's been interesting working on this lesson um, to see the different suggestions that, that different writers have made. Wallace talks about, and, and Nancy and I both like uh, William Barclay, um, Herschel Hobbes, and there is a dictionary that Wallace suggested that I bought that is really good. And um, so all of those I used to prepare and it was just, it was, it was good for me as I read it, I got a blessing from Hope that um, maybe you got something from it today. Any, anything else? Father, thank you so much for the word that we heard in Romans. What Paul was saying in his scriptures to the Romans. Thank you for giving us a guidance, guidelines as to how we can live and how we can be closer to you. Be with us this week and be with this country. Be with the world as we go through this COVID pandemic and help us get through it. In Christ's name.